Excellent. Hey guys, how's it going and welcome to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is a production video. So I'm gonna be talking about my production techniques here, specifically lighting. I got my first lights to make YouTube videos like six years ago now. I actually, back when I was still living at my apartment and I really haven't upgraded much from then. I'm gonna show you real quickly what I'm using now and then we're gonna take a field trip down to Kyle's office because he has improved his lighting and that's not due to any magnificent knowledge that Kyle has, it's because of Chris. And Chris is Kyle's camera guy, does some editing, uh, also does some lighting work. So I'm gonna see if I can get some feedback, some suggestions from him on how I can improve the lighting here in my garage. So I've started this video with most of my lights off and please forgive the mess of Ryzen 2 stuff that's still over there. But right now all I've got on is these uh, orb, these big orb lights that are up above and these are just using some china balls and just a single fluorescent light inside them. They are, uh, I believe, 5000K rated lights so it's kind of daylight. I do try to go with daylight lighting in here as much as possible. The biggest upgrade to my lighting that I've done recently, if I can find where to turn it on, is the addition of these background RGB LEDs. I usually keep these blue just because it matches with the gray walls pretty well. Uh, and this added background lighting, so that gave me a little bit of depth. You don't necessarily just want to have a single source of lights, and this will also provide some bit of lighting in the background. And when I added this, I was like, wow, that really makes things look a lot nicer. Of course, I'll usually have Arctic Panther on in the background there too, and that adds a bit more of lighting in the back. But my main sources of light, which I've just switched on via those switches there, are these big soft boxes. So I've got two sets of these. Uh, this is actually from the smaller set that I originally got back at the apartments. These are by Cowboy Studio. Uh, they've got five individual bulbs inside each one. And because they're cheap and they're made to be collapsible and somewhat portable, they're like starting to fall apart as far as the soft boxes there in the corners. But if you look inside, you can see these are fluorescent CCFL bulbs. I usually only keep maybe two or three of them on at a time and I try to rotate and switch between so they don't burn out. And on the plus side, those bulbs, they're still the original bulbs. So those have lasted a long time, but these are just, they're, they're kind of light and flimsy. The stands down here don't always stay up and they tend to start to collapse and that kind of thing. So adding some C stands here that are actually real professional C stands I think would be cool. I should still be able to use my ceiling mounted pole right here that I did in my, um, my Simple Machines uh, hardware vlog that I did the pulley setup on this for. That's actually been pretty convenient because I can raise it and lower it if I want to. But other than a third softbox that I have over here that I switch on when I'm shooting stuff uh, here on the main work table, that's pretty much all the lights I have. But ultimately my goal when setting this all up was just for there to be light. Enough light for it to be daylight and for it to be not too challenging to move around. But I'd like to move on to something that's maybe a little bit prettier, uh, maybe gives me a little bit more flexibility, maybe lets me add a little bit more color, and as you can maybe see the lighting on my face right now, just sitting at my desk, it's very uniform across the whole thing. So making that a little bit more dynamic with like a key and a fill, I think would be great. And there's a train coming right now, but that doesn't matter. I'm gonna go to Kyle's. All right guys, I've made my way to Kyle's office. Uh, I've come here every couple weeks to do uh, awesome hardware, of course. And in here, it's where the magic happens, as you can see. Uh, Oh, hey. Oh. oh. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. It's, uh, look, it's Kyle and Heather. We were just working. They're working? Working hard. Looking working hard. Doing working work. Doing cat videos. What, what okay. You, what you, you're here for Stack Attack, right? Yeah, I came just for Stack Attack. That's Woo! the only thing. We're going we're gonna to do Stack Attack today. Uh, check out that on Kyle's channel. And that's obviously the only reason I'm here. Only reason. Yep. All as right. far as I know. You guys stay here. I'm going to go talk to Chris and see what he's up to. I'm sure it'll be a very innocent right. conversation. Okay. They're nice. They're totally fooled. Taking advantage of them. Uh, oh look, Joe's here. That's very convenient. Hey Joe, uh, can you be the camera person? Oh sure. All right, Joe's the cameraman now. So in here is where awesome hardware happens. Uh, we usually sit right over here, and this is Chris. Hey Chris. Hey, what's up, Paul? How's it going? Uh, hey, Chris does editing, lighting. What else? What else do you do for Kyle? Uh, camera work. Camera work. Um, everything else. All the hard stuff. Know. Like Heather does all of Kyle's arrangements for sponsorships and everything. And like Chris does all the hard stuff. I don't even know what Kyle does I just anymore. just take care of like this. He just okay. takes, takes care of like the creative stuff, you know, all the content. Creative. Ideas and whatnot. He can be pretty creative. All right, so Chris, let me, here, here, here's my issue. Here's my problem. And Joe can probably relate to this. Uh -huh. I tend to get things set up so that they're functional, sure. so that they work. And then I just leave them as is. Cause I'm like, that works. I don't want to yeah, touch yeah, it. Yeah, of course. And that's what I've been doing with my lighting for the past like five years. Mm. 
So I have an understanding, basic understanding of the simple three-point lighting scheme that you typically sure. learn about in film school, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. You got your key, where the mm -hmm. bright light comes in, you got a fill. Usually there's some balance between those. That's my problem right sure, now, I have no sure. balance. Mm -hmm. Adds a bit of a dynamic contrast to the face sure. and that kind of thing. And then there's a hair light which goes up and over the shoulder mm -hmm. from behind. So mm -hmm. I would like some advice on perhaps some upgraded lighting itself. Okay. Maybe switching from fluorescent to LEDs. Right. And then also just tips on positioning okay. and how, how to make things pop. I want sure. things to pop. Sure, sure. All right, so let's get started. Where? Sure. Um, these are lights. These are indeed lights. So uh, I guess the way I would start off is, you know, choosing the type of lights that you want. Okay. Um, right now we're using all, pretty much all exclusively LEDs. Okay. Um, primarily because, you know, low wattage pull, meaning you don't have to, you can run a lot of lights, you won't blow any circuits in your house. Whereas if you, like, were running tungsten lights, they would not only get really hot, um, they would pull a lot of power and you tend to blow your circuit breaker. That was one thing that I liked about switching from uh, tungsten to, to fluorescence yes. was less power draw, but LEDs yes. are even less than that. Yes. And also uh, fluorescence in my experience, they tend to have like a little bit of a green tint. Green, yes. So uh, you, you can fix that in post, but it's not ideal. Right. Uh, also with fluorescence, you have to be careful with if you're shooting any high frame rate or high speed uh, shooting, ah. they sometimes tend to flicker. Get the flicker. Uh, sometimes with, uh, with tungsten, that's what they're known for is high, high frame rate capabilities. Okay. But yeah, uh, right now we're using all the LEDs. Uh, what's really key and crucial is that they're bi-color. Okay. So you can change them from a warm tungsten source to a cooler daylight kind of temperature, color temperature. Okay. Right and now they're kind of in the middle just because we have also some fluorescence in here to you know, kind of try and match that when they're on, but yeah. And, and my, my MO in, in my garage is everything's just daylight. And yeah. That's, that's pretty much what I do. So that's adding a little, a little more warmth, I mm -hmm. think would, would be nice there. Yeah, yeah. So these, you can adjust them, right? You can- They are adjustable, knob. not only in, uh, in the dimming, but you can also uh, adjust the, the color temperature. So kind of warm to a cooler daylight, you know, like you said. Nice. So very, very flexible in that idea. Uh, this one in particular is a, is a spotlight from uh, Hive Lighting. We got this primarily because these are bicolor, but this is also RGB. So just to clarify for you guys, we're not caring about the lighting in this video. We're doing this video to make sure that the lighting in future videos is better. All right, so this one, this is expensive, right? This is a this is like a thousand dollars. This one runs for about a thousand. They just came out with another one, I believe, is like twenty five hundred, but it's a little bit stronger. They also have another one that's cheaper, I think, half price. Uh, oh, I like that. So, um, but they are all uh, RGB, and they um, are all kind of uh, fully customizable, if you will. You can change. You can change your obviously your dimming capabilities, your color temperature, um, whatever you know RGB value you want, and however saturated you want. So it's very very flexible in that manner. Um, and it's LED, so it's not going to get hot at all. Um, and this one's like directional, right? So you're yes. you're using this to throw some light on the background up against the wall. So what I'm doing is kind of like a little, I guess, tip for you guys that you guys can use uh, is what we're doing called color contrast. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, we're kind of keying. We're going to be keying you and Kyle with uh, just a normal kind of light, frontal light. And then we're going to be coloring the background with a different light to kind of make you pop or stand out, as you will, okay. from the background. Um, and that's a very common thing to do in lighting is kind of a color contrast, you know? Cool. And uh, it definitely <laughs> makes the background stand out a bit more. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you said, contrast. Yeah, add between some life the subject to it. It adds some life to the, the white walls, you know? So. And, and depth. depth. See, I did, I did learn a few things in film school. You want depth in shots. Usually you want something in the foreground, yeah. mid-ground, and definitely. background. Definitely. And that's, that's, definitely how, that's definitely. how Scorsese does it, from my understanding. Scorsese's the man. So these are acting as hair lights. This is... Your fill over this here. This is our key. Oh, sorry, your key. Yeah. And then... If I were to do a fill, I'd actually bounce it on the ceiling. Okay. Because so, that gives it more like a room tone of light. Okay. Yeah. And the, and the So the fill, the fill is really almost like incidental, right? The fill like, kind of, yeah. I mean, the fill is basically all the light that's kind of bouncing around throughout the walls, you know, especially since they're white right now. Um, you're going to get a lot of kind of fill coming from this wall, from that wall, from the ceiling. Okay. Um, and you know, I, I like to t generally fill from the from the top down, just because it gives this kind of ambient, what I call like room tone. Okay. Um, so if you were to do like a like a say a green color, whatever bouncing, it's gonna the whole room's gonna feel like you're in a green like cavern or something. Whereas opposed, if you use like a fill light from the side, it looks very directional, very sourcey. So that's a very nice way to kind of hide your fill. Okay. Um, 
is by bouncing off of like a white roof or something. Even if you have like a white bounce card that you can just kind of hang there, that, that works too. I, I moved back over here because the key, the key light I think is something that uh, has been improved greatly. So we've got an LED behind a diffuser. Mm -hmm. and originally you guys had this set up with just uh, like a sheet or just, a piece of plastic or something. Just bare bulb or, or, or with the, like a little thing of silk. Okay. Um, but yeah. This has been updated with actual, uh, hey, this is- this is Gel material. A, a gel, that's Film the word gel. I was looking for. Yes. <laughs> and this sort of spreads the light out and makes it softer. Um, yes. Because obviously we're not doing like film noir or anything like that. Right. And it's also great for filming because it helps diffuse mm -hmm. like reflections. So you don't, you don't get a nasty reflection exactly. light bulb or something. Helps to bloom out the, the highlights, specular highlights. Okay, and, uh, so if I wanted to set up something like this, mm -hmm. and let's say I wanted to have it suspended from the ceiling, mm -hmm. like what, 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 what do you think I should do for that? Well, uh, what we recently have been doing, uh, I kind of recommended to Kyle, is to kind of upgrade the diffusion kind of idea. And we went along with this 25 foot by, I gosh, I don't even know how long this is, like maybe four feet, three ah. feet of it's, it's the same probably, material. It's probably some extra here, right? Uh, maybe, yeah. Kyle, Kyle probably wouldn't miss this if I, you know, just rolled off a sheet. I mean, I didn't see anything. All right, <laughs> you guys didn't hear anything. <laughs> but uh, we've essentially put this on a C-stand and we kind of roll it down to essentially give us the same effect with that, what that light is doing right now. It's kind of diffusing or softening the look. And effectively what it does is you get a larger surface area, which is very important in, in how soft the light can get is the surface area that the light takes up. So the bigger the surface area, the more diffused the light will be, the softer it will, will be kind of wrap around corners, that kind of thing. Exactly, exactly. So as you can see, this thing is 25 feet long, so I'm not gonna unroll the whole thing, but it's, um, big. You, it's a huge thing that, you know, like you said, you, if you wanted to suspend it from the ceiling, you could do so. We usually just put the, the actual arm just straight through okay. and it, it suspends it, you know. Uh, you can do the same thing from the ceiling, I would assume, you know, some string or whatnot. And then just let it hang and just shoot your lights through it and it looks gorgeous. Right now this is a, a half diffusion, so what we do is we double up on it when we need to do like any reflections with like tempered glass okay. and, and all that stuff. And it's great with like monitor reflections as well, because uh, you don't get that really harsh little spot on the, on the on the monitor. Okay, but I def definitely need to get me some of that then. Yes. So it's convenient that uh, we're setting up, we're, we, I didn't do any setup. <laughs> it's convenient <laughs> that Chris and Kyle and Heather have set up for Stack Attack because here uh, is a pretty unique use case scenario for setting up lighting. Two different subjects, since Kyle and I are gonna be facing off on opposite sides over here. Uh, so what have you done to set up the lighting here, Chris? Well, uh, one quick um, fix on what you said. This is actually for the intro specifically. Oh, this is the intro, because the lighting is going to change. Indeed, yeah. Changing lighting between shots. That's also something I should look into. Definitely. Um, so right now what we have is uh, a couple of, or actually I should say three LEDs from uh, Dreamcast. Um, they're very kind of inexpensive options to just get in general, like uh, light in there for, for our set. Mm -hmm. And then obviously we have the Hive uh, Wasp for that kind of color throw. Uh, but right now we have what you just said is a, a hair light, essentially. It, I, I prefer them a little bit better to just a normal backlight, although backlights are nice. Mm -hmm. um, they just kind of, like you said, separate from the background and help you kind of get that depth and dimension in your shot. Um, we kind of illuminating the other person with an overhead just so that it's not in the shot. It's just trying to hide the lighting, be a little bit more subtle with it. And then right here we have the key, which is being diffused by a full diffusion uh, <clears throat> full white diffusion for the key right here that's going to happen on the little intro area. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's a pretty simple setup. Uh, I say simple, but you know, what's key also in this is that we're using the C-stands uh, because, you know, they're able to boom out and, and kind of get overhead and, mm -hmm. you know, you can put, put these lights almost anywhere that you really want to. I mean, they extend really high, they, they extend outwards really far. Uh, and they're able to support a lot of weight since they're, you know, either aluminum or, or steel sometimes, and just very overall versatile. So that's another huge thing to, to consider. Okay, so I have a shopping list and I'm gonna do a follow-up video where I actually integrate this advice into my own setup. So I gotta get some of these Draycast uh, LEDs uh, and I'm gonna find the specific models of these, sure. put the links in the description as well. Uh, I gotta get one of those Wasp, Hive, hive Wasp? Wasp 100C. Wasp 100C. That's probably going to be the big spend, but that's really cool because it can be used in so many different scenarios. Yeah, I mean, what I told Kyle is, you know, you can use a, a spotlight for a spotlight purpose, but you can't use a, a you know, soft light and, and spot it. 
So, but you can always make a, a hard light soft. You can always make that spotlight soft. Okay. So it's more versatile. So you can make you can go from hard to soft, but it's harder to go from soft to hard. That's what we have learned today. And then finally, of course, C stands. I got to get some C stands. I got to replace those flimsy LED stands that I've got back at home. So, um, guys, that's pretty much all for this video. We're just coming over here, of course. Theoretically, do stack attack, but wanted to get some advice from Chris. I've been jealous of the lighting setup that Kyle's got going on over here, and I can Thank I can you. compare it. I have the direct comparison from what stuff looks like uh, in my garage, which I thought was looking pretty good for a while. It doesn't look bad though. It looks it's, good. It's so okay. Far. Yeah. But again, it's like it's functional, sure. but it could be better. So I'm just looking to improve things. Uh, Chris. Thank you very much for your help today. Of uh, thank you guys Amazing. for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. Again, links to the products are going to be in the description, and I'll be back with more very soon. And of course, check out Stack Attack because um, don't tell Kyle that I actually use Chris for other other purposes. What? Chris? Kyle? Oh, come with me. That's... Thanks a lot, Paul. All right. Well, now I now I'm probably in for it for Stack Attack, but I don't even know what the punishments are yet. Kind of. Kind of worried, actually. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button, of course. Uh, links to more videos down in the description, as well as products that we discussed today. And again, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Paul's Hardware.